to this edition of What a Horse, and he's back. He feels better. Yes, I feel a little better. Moving. He didn't come in with no walker. No. I mean, he uh -uh. actually got out and walked in, nobody helping him. Yes. <laughs> well, you did good. Yeah, <laughs> did pretty good. It, it, getting embarrassed. Huh? Are you getting embarrassed? Yeah, walking around with that walker that make you feel a little, like, you're real, like you're really old. <laughs> <laughs> make you feel like an old man. Yeah. <laughs> All right, you do your do, and we'll do then we'll do ours. We'll be right back after these messages. Welcome to where the five to nine more than makes up for the nine to five. To where you check your troubles, along with your coat. And days are made, even at 10 at night. Welcome to the best time you've ever had, since the last time you were here. To old friends, new experiences, and forgotten cares. Welcome to where life moves at the speed of you. Welcome to Samstown Tunica Hotel and Gambling Hall by Boyd. Welcome to where you want to be. People in Tennessee are starting a movement. Ouch. Thank you. To clean up the litter on our roadways. Litter hurts our environment and endangers wildlife. And it affects our quality of life. Here, grab me. Thank you. Help keep our state litter free. That's true. Visit NobodyTrashesTennessee.com and be a part of the solution to end littering. Saving the best for last. That's right. Nobody trashes Tennessee. Folks, this is where you send money to help in the legal fund to combat the new proposed rulemaking that the USDA released here a couple weeks ago. This is tax-deductible donation as fast as a 501c3, and be sure to put legal fund on your memo line as this guarantees that your money goes exactly where you want it to go. You know, Jerry, uh, we got a Pee-Watch show coming up this weekend yes. over in Murfreesboro, Tennessee. <clears throat> a lot of flat shot horses will be there. And uh, 27th and 28th going to be the Alabama Jubilee. But my, my, here's what I'm wondering. We were told when the lawsuits were filed and everybody's still worried I'm. I've really got a lot of faith in this lawsuit. Yes. But if everybody remembers, we were told that the USDA would get kind of wacky, more wacky than they were. Let's put it like that. And uh, they they have. We have seen them. We showed a, a inspection video last week of where they even lifted the tail and flash in the flashlight at the tail. But in Kentucky, they wrote up an open lesion on a tail set rub. Now, you know, that's getting very far-fetched right there. <laughs> I'm a, I knew. I mean, I, I believed when we were told that they would get a, get start doing a bunch of wild things. But they keep creating. They 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 created the, the like the field scar on your horse. 
And, and I mean, anybody with common sense knows that was a failed scar. Yeah. It's up there at the knee. Then she, uh, Carrie, the one they call Granny, uh, rode up a horse because, and, and he had a letter from a, a equine veterinarian, a licensed equine veterinarian, people. A licensed equine veterinarian in the state of Tennessee who works on horses for a living. He doesn't sit over in a chair and wait for a weekend to go down to come up with fictitious, created violations. He actually makes a living in working and treating horses. There was a letter stating that that was where a gravel had come out. Yeah, popped out, yeah. Popped out at the coronet band. Her reply was, well, that never happens or hardly ever happens, or I just don't believe that. In other words, this veterinarian lied. Well, she ain't never been around a lot of horses. She ain't never seen that happen before. Well, I'll just tell you, that happened to any breed of horse. It is. It does. It uh, happens in all, all breeds. All, breed all of horses. breeds of horses have that problem. And, and But they ride them and stand there. It's kind of like that guy that said there's a, there's a scar here, but even though it's only three cells thick. We know what that is. It is BS. Anybody that doesn't know what that stands for, email me or call me and I will explain it to you. But, I mean, it, it's ridiculous some of the violations that they're coming up well, with. Well, they just coming up with a lot of different violations. And I mean, if you're gonna come up with violations like that, that can go for any breed of horse, can get any kind of mark or any kind of scratch up there by the GERD, sides, or whatever. Well, they've rolled them up for that. Yeah. They, they've rolled them up for a breast band, for a girth rub. I mean, it, it's like they're wanting they're wanting to push us to the point that someone does something silly. Yes. And and I'm, there's one trainer, I'm not going to call his name, but every time they, they do something to him that he knows is BS, anybody that's ever been in inspections and watched this gentleman get a ticket, y'all know that this is what he does. He's, and that's like saying, yep. I know how stupid you are. Plum ignorant. Well, you know, and, and it's hard to not to say nothing, but that's the best way to be. Because it ain't nothing else, it ain't gonna change. You're not gonna argue and fuss him or cuss him into changing their mind or whatever. So, I mean, it's, and, and it's hard. And I not had a lot of things and, and got real upset about it myself. But I mean, and I guess that's the right approach to do, just to smile and nod, nod and go on. That's like a police pull you over and you know that he pulled you over for no reason. There ain't no sense of arguing with him. Just go with the flow. Just go with the flow because... This is one thing I will say, though. We've got cameras. The trainers have cameras. Everybody, you got a cell phone. Turn that cell phone sideways right like this. Video the inspection. If they tell you... Now, this is in the state of Tennessee, but in the state of Tennessee, if they tell you you can't video, Call 911 because they just broke the law. And I am dead serious. Call the police. Do, do not be bullied by them because there's no sense in it. They, they tried that over at the Ag Center. As soon as the police got there, they complied. They decided, well, we, we better do what we're supposed to do. We know what's legal. We know what the law is. We're going to follow it. And in the state of Tennessee, you have the right to video your inspections. I've had person after person tell me, well, they wouldn't let me video. Nobody, nobody can stop you from videoing. If the USDA is inspecting your horse, you have the right to video, period. There is no question. Show management can't stop you. Nobody can. It's just like this guy right here. He tries it, but it don't work. He's talking to the police right there, and the police is telling him, hey, we're either coming in there or are you bringing them out here, period. That policeman explained it to him. Yeah. So I talked to a guy the other day and I said, I'm not afraid to call the police on them. There's laws for them. There's laws for us. They use the law to bully us. Yes. All I'm doing is using the law to make them follow the law. So 
If I can call the police on them, anybody out there can call the police on them. You're going to get the same service. A law is a law. But I get tired of hearing them that they won't let us video. That, that's just not true. Nobody can stop you. So. Well, thanks to you, because well, you've done well, all that, 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 yeah. that has nothing to do with it. What has to do with it is what's fair. That's right. They, for years, they would stand in front of the cameras. They would do anything. They even made us video from outside the celebration. Uh, uh, the Calsonic at the time, but now it's Cooper Steel. Like there, I got a guy videoing. This is what they do. They want him standing in the door to where they can get in front of him. That guy right there even turned several times to make sure that he was blocking the view of the camera. I mean, it, it, this is the USD, this is your government, the USDA, and what they do when they come in. I just hope and pray, I truly do, that when we have our day in court, that those guys are brought in and made to testify. Yeah. Because that's going to be the ultimate question. Will they lie under oath? And I've got my doubts about some of them lying under oath. And I think we got enough evidence that if the others do lie, there's enough evidence that they can, could be convicted of perjury. Yeah. And I, for one, I mean, I have no qualms. I would charge them. It's just like these, uh, we was talking about people and, and the violations that they come up with. And if y'all watch, they will start picking at a horse, rubbing, 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 taking their fingernails, pulling apart, pulling apart. If they can create disfigurement, like you can take and rake across my hand and, and make it kind of look scarred up. Yeah. Now, if you take a picture of it right quick, it's going to show it. Show it, that's right. But if you wait a minute and let it go back to normal, it won't. So if you notice when they are getting ready to shoot a video, they're down there picking at the same time. So what they're doing is disfiguring part of the horse's pastern to give the illusion that there's something there. there. And especially, and I tell you, and it will show up on a lighter foot color horse foot too, like a white color horse foot. If you get the rubbing on it more, it'll turn like a pink color. Yep. And if you take a picture of it, you think it is, but that's just the pigment of his skin that shows up right there. And they know that. Yes. But they use that as though that we're just dumb, that we don't know what they're doing. Uh, I don't know. I, I need to talk to Ron White, the comedian, mm -hmm. and tell him about this. And he could come up with a real good storyline joke yeah. that everybody in the world would see that would show exactly what they do. I mean, it's, it's ridiculous, but people allow it. And as long as you allow it, they'll continue to do it. That's why now everybody, and, and I've, I've said this time and again, I'm going to repeat it. If you're going to show your horse tonight, just have a veterinarian check him. Have an equine veterinarian check him. If he says he's good, then take him. If they start falsifying stuff that night, they're breaking the law. Charge them. Simple. They say, well, we can't be sued. Well, that's, who cares? I don't want to sue you. I want to charge you. Yeah. If you turn down a horse that is not sore, or if something is not wrong with him, that is falsifying your evidence. It's against the law. It's plain and simple, against the law. Charge them, they're fixing. Horse shows are competition, we compete. If they diminish the number of horses in a class, they're depleting the competition. That right there is Penal Code Section 132. It's very distinct that if you alter evidence, anything like that, it's against the law. Yes. So, me, I'd charge them. But I'm, I'm, I'm just a crazy old hillbilly. <laughs> but, but I believe in right and I believe in wrong. And you, you know as well as you know how I am with my horses. 
I'm not going to let no, you or nobody but, else mistreat them, not that you would. Yeah. But I'm not going to let someone else mistreat them. And I'm damn sure not going to let them tell me that I mistreat my own. Yeah, that's right. Not when I know I don't. So they, they can come up with their falsified evidence, their creativity. They can rub, they can do whatever they want to. But if they, if they ever turn down one of mine, it better be for something real. Yeah. It better not be because they created something. I won't take it. And as an industry, I don't think any of us should. That's why I'm hoping they get them in there to advertise. Yes. I mean, not advertise, but to get them in there to testify. That's, they, they are advertising, but we want them to testify. All right, we got some pictures of a, we got a pictures of horses that have been turned down for scar rope. Now, look here. Tell me where the, uh, the scars are. Anybody. What they do is they'll take any kind of a blemish or whatsoever. Yes. They'll call it, they'll say, well, that's out. This right here is a two-year-old, a two-year-old filly called out on scar rope. And I don't see nothing wrong with that horse. I don't see nothing all. wrong with it at all either. But they'll take any little mark that they see where the skin, the hair is pushed back or yeah. whatever. And then up there, at the, it's just, I mean, that, that's something normal. But they want to make it into something that's not. That's right. I remember in 2016, they decided, well, let's just check and see how accurate the USDA is. They took 29 horses, 29, that were given scar ropes. They took them out, put them in a stables, cared for them for a month, did biopsies on them and everything to see how many of them were scarred. A hundred percent were not scarred. They did 58 biopsies on 29 horses. None of them showed any signs of being scarred. So that's 29 horses that were disqualified from the celebration, which cost the owner, the trainer, money. Plus, they didn't get to show. And if they were entered to show back, they didn't get to show back. So they cost them a world championship and a world grand championship because they wanted to play like they knew what a sore horse was when they didn't have the slightest idea. Well, the whole biggest thing, that's why they made that rule, that no show back rule, because they'll turn a horse down one minute on a scar and they would turn, well, they, somebody would turn around and bring that same horse back up and they'd let him in. Yeah. So that tell you right there, and that's why they made that rule where you couldn't show back. Once you got turned down the scar rule, that horse was done. That's also the reason they come up with the no show back. Yeah. <clears throat> now right here is an example of inspection. Every one of these horses right here are in timeout. Yes. Every one of them are in timeout. The, the HPA says they're not supposed to interfere with the flow of a show. They put stipulations on it, but the USDA does not follow any of them. If they can cause you a problem, they're going to go out of their way to cause you a problem. They had more horses in timeout than they had in this, when people they, were warming up. Then, that's right, they did. They had more horses right there tied up, and all them horses are ready to be showed or came out of the ring and waited to be checked. They was checking first through fifth. First through fifth? Yeah. See, they changed that. Used to it was first, first through, through third. third. Yeah. They create these That's, rules as they go, and all of it, all of it is because the industry did one thing. We stood up to them. We got to continue to stand up to them. That's why the FAST, we need to donate to FAST. We need to support fast. We need to support our attorneys. We need to take them to court, let the law decide if what they're doing is just, because we know it's not, and we're the ones that pay their salary. We got a video here of Representative John Rose, and I want everybody to listen to it, because this guy 
You've got to hit the nail on the head. Here we go. Mr. Secretary, on August 31st, uh, it was the final day of the Tennessee Walking Horse National Celebration. My staff and I stayed up until the early hours of the morning and watched as USDA's veterinary medical officers disqualified horse after horse for the most subjective and, frankly, scientifically inaccurate reasons. I and several others from the Tennessee and Kentucky delegation sent you a letter on August 5th highlighting our concerns regarding uh, a couple of the VMOs, veterinary medical officers, who have been present at recent walking horse uh, exhibitions. Why have we failed to receive a response from you, and when can we expect to receive a response from you on this issue that's very important to many across the country, and particularly in Tennessee? Uh, I will get you a, a response uh, quickly. I, I will tell you that this is obviously an issue upon which there are significant differences of opinion. Uh, the rule that we put in place it was a controversial one, uh, with people feeling very strongly about it again, for it and very strongly uh, against it. Uh, so it's not surprising that there were people that were not happy. Um, but uh, at the end of the day, it's our job to make sure that uh, the horses are safe. Um, and uh, I'm uh, confident that our people were doing the best job they could under the circumstances. I, I have no such confidence and having watched the inspections on August 29th for several hours, what I can tell you is that it was a, it was a classic display of a regulator run amok and uh, look forward to future opportunities to address this issue with, uh, with you. But the harm has been done and can now not be remedied and unfortunately that, that regulation was not supposed to take effect until next year as you know. Uh, and so what we still uh, instead saw was a subjective application of standards that have never been imposed before. So I'm very disappointed in the department and frankly disappointed in you, Mr. Secretary, for that failure. My time has expired. Thank you for your indulgence, Mr. Chairman. I yield back. Now, John Rose said he was disappointed in Bill Sack. Yeah. There's one person that's not, and that's his wife, because she's the one having him do it. Yeah. He, he knows what's going on. I hope they end up with him in court, too. I really yeah. do. I'd love to see him in court answering questions, not to a senator or not to John Rose, but to somebody with authority that can say, you either answer it or we'll put you in a little cell over here until you decide yeah. to answer it. Because you, when you go to court, you better do your thing. Uh, you, you remember I told you about the picture of Buddy Black? Yeah. And them taking the portrait of Buddy Black and cutting his head off mm -hmm. and putting Doug Woolliver on it. Well, I finally had time to go to War Trace, and I took it down and gave it to them. But I want you all to take a look. Here's some video from the museum in War Trace, Tennessee, well worth visiting. They've got every world champion, world grand champion down there. They've got everything under the sun in there. There's a good tale about triple threat, too, because... A lot of people don't realize it. They never started training him till he was five years old. Oh, I, yes. My yep. dad told me all about it. Because he was the one, one that helped Brookie. Yeah. Mm hmm But they, they've got everything under the sun. They got a, we're fixing to go around the corner, Bud Slide sent Slim is around, around that corner right there. But this just. Uh, That's amazing. Hey. Thing, they've got the last pair of boots that were ever worn in the Celebration Arena. Mm. Who wore them? I don't know. Oh, That's come a, on, oh, Jerry. I don't, I don't know who won that. That's, another, I was young. A, another masterpiece. <laughs> and Ronnie Spears. Tell you, Ronnie Spears looked them up. <laughs> he said, Jerry, I'm going to let you have these. And he gave them to me. <clears throat> well, I had them down to, at the studio for a while. And, he was over there and I talking to him. I said, Ronnie, I said, I got a guy that offered me $3,000 for them boots. He said, I want them back. <laughs> <laughs> I done too late and I took them to the museum. <laughs> but that, that was uh, the, the portrait that I showed that I gave them for uh, Triple Threat and Doug Wooliver. I put the snapshot, it was black and white, in there with the portrait. Now, Pam Hogersmith gave me that portrait because uh, she, she, she's a good friend, long-time friend, and uh, she just thought I'd like to have it. I told her, I said, I'll tell you where it needs to be. That portrait needs to be at the museum, and that's yes. the reason I carried it down there. 
There's them boots. You'd be surprised at some of the boots and, and shoes, different packages that they made years ago. Yes. Started out with leather. With leather shoes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, it was. Now, back then, you call your, you had blacksmiths. Yeah. That shod back then because they used to have to take that nail and drive all the way up and oh, bring yeah. it out of that horse's foot down there. And I mean, he was real talented. I've watched Jim Alexander make shoes, but I'm gonna tell you one of the best ones I've watched, Woody Woodruff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Woody, in, in uh, I believe it was 2004, it's the 100th anniversary of War Trace Horse Show. Uh, we did a lot of demonstrations down there. And uh, Woody came down and sat there, and, and as hot as it was, he, he st made a pair of shoes so these youngsters and everybody yeah. could play. There's triple threat. But um, he's saying it's trick, trick or treat. Yeah. But the the signs up there, the touch is on one side, and triple threat's on the other side. Yeah. <laughs> there it is, triple threat. And Doug Wooliver is the paint, is the color. Yeah. The black and white, that's Doug Wooliver. Well, okay. And all it was was, a, was an advertisement for them to uh, to present him to. And then another thing is he sold for $40,000 one time, but after he won the world championship, world grand championship, he sold for $100,000 to three gentlemen to stand stood. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it was uh, something else. Now we're, we're going to show something else that, that's very dear to me because you, you know how I am with a lot of horses, but here's one. Th this one's mine. That's Olivia. Now a lot of people remember Olivia because when she was a teenager, she used to ride all the time. John Balls was her grandfather. There she is on Sir, and he is one that he's just four years old this year. But now that young lady can ride. Yeah, she is. She's a good rider. She's a very good rider. But now she rides a lot on her own. Don't she have the pleasure horses she rides? Oh, her she house? has pleasure horses, yeah. but she doesn't have the pleasure horses anymore. She gets to go trail riding and stuff with friends. Yeah. But she she loves to come out to the barn, and and do this, because it, it, I used to run all kinds of ads on her when she was a child. But she she's a super good rider. Yes, she is. She's a good rider, and very pleasant to coach. Whatever oh, yeah. you tell her to do, she gonna do it. Oh yeah. yeah. Well, she 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 can feel it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's just like she she's. She was talking to me about Sir, the way he felt and the way he would change when she'd do something. Yeah. So that's it. All right, well, we've, we've done everything we can the first segment, so if you'll go to commercial, we'll do another segment. That'll work. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be right back after these messages. <laughs> Giles Dunn is a leader in both cultured and lab-grown diamonds. Located at 234 North Jackson Street in Tullahoma, Tennessee, Giles Dunn is well known for his beautifully designed jewelry. From that special diamond for your special wedding day to the one that says I love you more, Giles Dunn is the place to shop if you want to say it with diamonds. Open five days a week and always ready to assist you in that one in a lifetime purchase. To set an appointment for cultured or lab-grown diamond viewing, call 931-563-7800. Hey Tennessee, Ross Chastain here, the guy who likes to smash watermelons on the front stretch at Nashville Super Speedway. But you know what I never smash? Safety rules. Racing's all about control, and the same goes for life on the road. So use your melon and don't mix drinking and driving. It's like trying to race with a busted engine. Be a pit crew hero. And if you've had a few, pass the keys to a sober friend because we're all racing toward a safer Tennessee and we want you there at the finish line.
folks. This is where you send money to help in the legal fund to combat the new proposed rulemaking that the USDA released here a couple weeks ago. This is tax deductible donation as fast as a 501c3 and be sure to put legal fund on your memo line as this guarantees that your money goes exactly where you want it to go. Welcome back. You know, Jerry, every year we try to do Stars of the Future. And uh, we've been able to every year. Uh, this year, things were a little different. Now, we're still going to show the video. But it's kind of disappointing when the USDA goes so far overboard in what they do that they, they try to screw up everything that has any meaning at all. Yeah. And, uh, well, let's just go ahead and show the video. And people will get the, they'll see what it is that I'm talking about happening because the stars of the future wasn't quite like stars of the future. Yes. It's supposed to be. Let's go ahead. Kate Cowan is the daughter of Dr. John and Amy Cowan of Bowling Green, Kentucky. She's riding the legendary Mr. Deeds, a horse that Kate absolutely loves and adores. Mr. Deeds is boarded at Lloyd's Tables in Bowling Green. Kate attends Greenwood High School in Bowling Green, where she's active in a variety of organizations. She's the current FFA chapter secretary and has served on the parliamentary team, the Livestock Horse Judging Competitions, State Envirothon, and Veterinary Science Club. She attended leadership conferences in Indianapolis and Washington, D.C. for the organizations where she has excelled at presentations and public speaking. Kate is an excellent student with a 4.0 GPA. In addition, she earned second place in the Kentucky State FFA trap shoot in 2024. Watch out, people. This girl is a good shot. At her core, Kate loves God, her family, friends, animals, and helping others. And of course, a warm piece of oatmeal cake from her favorite restaurant, the Bell Buckle Cafe. She hopes one day to pursue a career in medicine and she plans on attending Belmont University when she graduates high school. She's excited to have her family, including her grandparents in the audience tonight to watch this special ride as we salute our Auxiliary Equitation Youth Medal World Grand Champion. Kate, we needed you to stop down at the south end. Sorry about that. Down to the south end, park in on the grass. We'll get all of you parked in and lined up. Next into the ring, we welcome our lead line pony world grand champion. Here's Coy Sanderson and can do too. Coy Sanderson, the four-year-old son of Clay and Casey Sanderson and big brother to sister Renlin Sanderson. Coy attends the Circle of Friends Christian Preschool here in Shelbyville, where his classmates call him Cowboy Cody. You can often find him flat walking up and down the hallways. Can Do 2 was acquired by the Sanderson family in the spring of 2023. Coy already had a lead line mount for 2023, so they waited to pair the team for 2024. Can Do 2 had some big shoes to fill as his Name comes from a horse named Delights Can Do, who was ridden by Coy's late grandfather and well-known horse trainer, Sam Caldwell. To honor his late grandfathers, Sam Caldwell and Charles David Sanderson, Coy wears back number 1945, the year that both grandfathers were born. Coy and Can Do Too started their show season at the Shelbyville Central High School tennis team show with a win, then they went on to Columbia Spring Jubilee and Marshall County Horsemans where they headed into the celebration as an undefeated team. They ended their season at the celebration with the approval of all five judges and claimed the lead line World Grand Championship title last Saturday night. Kim Bailey and Monty Miller of Creekview Stables worked tirelessly to prepare Can Do 2 this season and without their expertise, this would not be possible. When Coy is not flat walking around the ring at a horse show or in the show ring with his beloved pony, there's no place he'd rather be than at the barn with his dad, Clay, or trail riding with his mom, Aunt Kayla, and Uncle Lake. Coy says that when he grows up, he wants to be a horse trainer and work with his dad all day long, or he'll settle for being a cowboy like John Wayne. 
Corey and his mom, Casey Sanderson, want to thank everybody for their loyal support throughout this show season. Next, we welcome Frank Clark and Scarlett O'Hara. This is our owner amateur youth riders on Country Pleasure, Walking Mares of Gilding's World Grand Champion. Frank Clark of Arab, Alabama is the 18-year-old son of Nathan and Anna Clark and the older brother of John Winston Clark. Frank is a senior at Arab High School where he plays football and baseball and serves as class president. Frank earned his first ever Celebration Blue Ribbon last Friday morning aboard three-time world grand champion and three-time world champion Scarlett O'Hara, LLC. Scarlett is owned by Frank Clark and trained by Laurie Toon at Circle T Stables. Scarlett carried Frank to his very first spotlight ride on Thursday night to claim the title of Youth Country Pleasure World Grand Champions. Frank would like to thank Laurie Toon for her hard work and dedication to help him accomplish this lifelong dream. Frank also won another World Grand Championship title that we want to recognize him for. Aboard I Am Big Enough, he won the Owner Amateur Youth Walking Pony World Grand Championship. Frank had an amazing opportunity to partner with the Beth Beasley family on their champion pony, I Am Big Enough. Big Enough is trained by Main Motion Stables, Mickey McCormick and Chad Wade, and has been campaigned by Maxine Beasley until last week when Frank took the reins. Frank and I Am Big Enough rode to the owner amateur youth 15 to 17 year old pony world championship on Sunday night. The pair were reunited on Thursday night to make Frank's second spotlight ride of the night to claim the youth pony world grand championship. Frank would like to thank Beth, BB, and Maxine Beasley for the opportunity to make this ride of a lifetime. Chloe Amit McSwain, along with Annie's Lined with Cash, won our owner amateur youth show pleasure, Mayors or Gilding's World Grand Championship. Annie's Lined with Cash and Chloe Amit McSwain, 2024 World Grand Champions, three years in a row. The horse is already headed home, but Chloe's still with us and is with us in center ring tonight. The daughter of Kelly Weaver of Shelbyville and Keith McSwain of Atlanta, Georgia. She's in 10th grade at Webb School in Bell Buckle, and her passion is horses of all kinds, but is very partial to the Tennessee walking horse. She's quick to say that Annie's lined with cash is her all-time favorite horse. Although she's been involved with jumpers in the past, she's now mainly focused on her walking horses. Annie's lined with cash is on her way home to be bred, and not with us tonight, however, plans are already being made for her to be back in the show ring in 2025. Chloe thanks Carl Edwards and Sons for all their help and guidance, and friends and family for their love and support, and extends her appreciation for the celebration for the opportunity to participate in Stars of the Future. Next, we welcome our owner amateur youth all day pleasure, world grand champion, Tucker Johnson riding I Be Smoking Joe. Tucker is the son of Joel and Keisha Johnson, a junior at Cascade High School and a member of Fairhaven Baptist Church, member of the National Honor Society and Fellowship of Christian Athletes. He's a varsity member of the Shelbyville Central High School tennis team, where he was named Rookie of the Year and most games won in singles and doubles competition. Tucker made it to the semifinals at the state level. He was awarded the 2023 Best in Show with his horse Cool Vibes at the 2023 International Championships. He was the recipient of the Gilbert Miller Scholarship and enjoys fishing, golfing, as well as showing horses. He has a twin brother, Tanner, and also a brother, Grady Hulse. Tucker Johnson, I be Smoking Joe, our owner amateur youth all day pleasure, world grand champions. Next, we welcome our owner amateur youth, six to 11 year old, Mayors and Gilding's world grand champion, Eli Cunningham and It's the Medalist. Eli Cunningham and It's the Medalist have achieved their dream in winning the 2024 world grand championship title in their division. Their hard work and Eli's dedication to being the best rider and showman has paid off. Eli's the son of Brittany and Chase Cunningham and the grandson of James and Melissa Wilson and Ricky and Lisa Cunningham of Shelbyville. Eli's from Shelbyville and attends school at Liberty School where he's also a member of the Patriots basketball team. 2024 has been a successful year for the team, winning the fast 11 and under Columbia Spring Jubilee and Money Tree Classic. 
They were previously the 2022 Novice World Champions, the 2023 Reserve World Champions, and 2024 Reserve World Champions. This team retired the Ronald Mosley Challenge Trophy at the North Carolina Championship in Asheville, North Carolina, by winning the 11 and under division in 2021, 2022, and 2023. No stranger to the winner's circle, they accomplished their ultimate goal this year by being the 2024 11 and under world grand champion. And I believe they did that on Eli's birthday. So congratulations and happy birthday, Eli. Next, we welcome our owner amateur youth trail pleasure world grand champions, Harper Grider and Checkpoint Charlie. Harper's the 18 year old daughter of Brandon Courtney Grider of Columbia, Kentucky and is a six-time world grand champion and 13-time world champion. She attends Moorhead State University where she's currently studying veterinary science and majoring in the pre-vet field. Besides walking horses, Harper enjoys raising and selling Nigerian dwarf goats and spending time with her friends and family. When asked if she would like to participate in any sports, her answer to her mom was always, no, I can't, that's when I show horses. Checkpoint Charlie SF is a six-time world grand champion and 13-time world champion, sired by Walk Time Charlie, and his dam is a new direction. Together this year, Harper and Check have shown and received blues at the Money Tree Classic and the Tennessee Walking Horse National Celebration. They were world champions and world grand champions in 2020, world grand champions in 2022, and were world champions on Friday morning in their preliminary class. This year makes their third world grand championship together. Harper wishes to thank Sean and Tamara Hader for giving her the privilege to show check for the past four years because none of this would be possible without them. And thanks to Laurie for her hard work and always believing in her, as well as the whole Circle T Stables for their hard work. And then our most recently crowned World Grand Champion is our youth 12 to 17 year old owner amateur World Grand Champion. Caroline Wesley Way made that ride just moments ago. A junior at Northridge High School in Tuscaloosa, Alabama. She's on the varsity volleyball team and has been traveling back and forth all week to play and ride. Caroline's love for horses started at a very young age as she grew up in a horse-centered family. This win is extra special to Caroline Wesley as Vinny has overcome many health struggles in the last year. She claimed a world championship in 2022 and came back to claim the world grand championship in 2024. Jose's Vindicator carrying Caroline Wesley Wade for the World Grand Championship title. Ladies and gentlemen, as they all line up down at the south end, across the south end of our arena tonight. What you're looking at is the future of the Tennessee walking horse industry. They are our stars of the future. All of our youth World Grand Champions, would you give them a great round of applause tonight? Our heartfelt thanks to the Jake Jacobs family of Murfreesboro. Without them, this presentation would not be possible. They generously sponsored our Stars of the Future presentation tonight. Our thanks to the Jake Jacobs family. Well, they've all got the ribbons. Once again, they're right out of the ring. And they'll do it with our appreciation and applause. We'll go in reverse order this time, the way you came in. Caroline Wesley Way, you'll lead our parade of ribbon winners out of the ring tonight. Followed by Harper Grider and Checkpoint Charlie. Trail Pleasure, Mayors and Gildings winners. And then Eli Cunningham, and it's the medalist, our youth 6 to 11 year old of World Grand Champions. Tucker Johnson and Ivy Smoking Joe, our youth all day pleasure World Grand Champions. Frank Clark and Scarlett O'Hara, our youth country pleasure World Grand Champions. Frank also rode I Am Big Enough to a World Grand Championship win in the Youth Pony Division. Coy Sanderson and Can Do Two, our lead line, six and under World Grand Champions. And our Auxiliary Equitation Youth Medal World Grand Champions, Kate Cowan and Mr. Deeds. A 
And just because they're not on horseback, we certainly don't want to forget about Chloe Ammon McSwain, who rode Annie's line with cash to the Youth Show Pleasure World Grand Championship. We'll be right back after these messages. The Tennessee Walking Horse is rapidly becoming the horse of choice when selecting a great ride for the family. If you're looking for a smooth, easy ride on the trail that will take you through hills and streams or an obstacle course competition, the versatility of the Tennessee Walking Horse will stand out by showing its willingness to learn in its smooth, easy, steady gait through the course. If it's a competitive show horse you're looking for, the Tennessee Walking Horse is the perfect family horse by young and old. Whether it's flat shot or padded performance classes for an amateur adult or youth, a walking horse is the horse of choice. The Tennessee Walking Horse is perfect for every equestrian division. Also remember one simple truth. If you ride one today, you're on one tomorrow. That's a fact. Folks, this is where you send money to help in the legal fund to combat the new proposed rulemaking that the USDA released here a couple weeks ago. This is tax deductible donation as fast as a 501c3 and be sure to put legal fund on your memo line as this guarantees that your money goes exactly where you want it to go. More of What a Horse, coming up. On Sunday. All right, welcome back. We're going to do some, uh, what we both love, we're going to sit here and watch Victory Pass. Yes, sir. That play. We go to day 11. Oh, this day 9, I'm sorry. There's Say Cash and Susan Irwin for Dan and Susan Irwin. Owner Amateur Novice World Grand Champion. She made a fantastic she did show. show. I think you really get to see this class right here. No, you didn't. No. <laughs> you missed one. Yeah. But that's why I like these videos, so you can go back and watch them. No, I love them. I love just sitting and watching. I'll, I'll get upstairs sometimes and go to YouTube and just sit there and watch a bunch of them. Yep. Matter of fact, on these, I'm going to have to start sending out video links so the people that uh, won the classes can. Uh, that's a good little horse right there. Oh, yeah. What, oh, that's that, a good that's horse. one good horse. That is a good horse. Mayor Bill, Kim Lewis is up. George and Kim right, Lewis. Right there's a good one. Yep. Happy Mayor birthday, Bill George. Kim Lewis, 1001, is reserved. He just celebrated his birthday. Well, okay. A lot of people celebrating birthday. Oh, yeah. Tell you what, Kim's a good rider. She is a good rider. I'm gonna tell you, that's a very talented horse. You know, that horse, like you said before, that horse has been in all different well, divisions. It has. And everything else. It's a dake horse. He's been a little bit of everything. Yep. Born right there he is. There's my buddy. Oh, yeah, Mr. Bob. He's a nice guy. And he is one guy that I met when I first started doing quad horse. And, uh, he, he and Scott, uh, and I, I, we got along from the start. Yeah. Now, 
And that horse is one of my favorites. Right there, Space Cowboy. Well, Skyler tickled to death with that. Oh, yeah. This one now. Oh yeah, I liked him a lot. I liked him a lot. Every time you see this horse, this horse get better and better. Every time you look at him, he does. I believe, I believe that right there is going to end up in the last class on Saturday no, night. Yeah, I really do. I'd be smoking Joe. Tucker Johnson rides the Keith Johnson entry of Shelbyville. I'd be smoking Joe and Tucker Johnson under the spotlight. Now, how does that have won a bunch Tucker now? He, he has carried four riders to championships. And I'm just wondering when is Susie going to say, hey, let's knock off the cobwebs. I want to. I want to be on there too. Dude, that's right. So she she can probably outride all four mm -hmm. of them. <laughs> that would go down in history if he she can show him win one too, you know. It would. I'm gonna have Family to talk member. to her about that. And here, here's one that I really like. I liked. really like this one. Jalapeno. Right I just, nice you, you see that horse now. He is, uh, he's out at uh, Sugar Creek now. Yeah, okay. He's got stud duty. Cavender's going to Sugar Creek. That's a nice horse. <coughs> you talking about a head shaking dude right there? Yep. I'm Charlie Black. Charlie Black and Dahlia Smith Hart. You know, I can't get over the fact that this is her first world grand championship. I know. That, that's hard to I'm believe. And it's hard to believe that all those years and those world championships that this is her first world grand championship. <laughs> Right there, formal line and Carol Baxter. I'm gonna tell you, you take these horses just like that right there. Yeah. Just super good. But Carol, Carol got a stable full of good. Things. Oh yeah. Yeah, she does. That lady there, she's been showing horse for a good while. Oh, yeah. And here's Patrick Mahomes and Paul Simmons. Patrick Mahomes and Paul Simmons, 1250 is reserved. Oh, that's nice. Yep, that is. Getting 
it done. Right there he is. It's the medalist in Eli Cunningham. That's a real good horse there, too. Eli does a super job riding that horse. That horse is older than Eli. Eli told me, he said, I want to win that World Grand Championship. Well, he did. Getting her done, buddy. Getting her done. Right there is Uptight Jose and Bruce McDonald. Bruce and Robin McDonald, owner amateur of Mares and Gildan Reserve World Grand Champion. That's another nice little horse right there. For a long time. Yeah. For a long time. Bruce is just laid back. Yeah, he now, is. He is very laid back. Right here is Gigi's Majestic and Elsie Bradford for William Bradford. Owner amateur country pleasure. That horse is constantly up yeah. there. World champion, reserve world champion, reserve world grand champion. It's been a grand champion too, yeah. I believe. That's a nice horse there too. Oh yeah. Elsie's a nice young lady. Horses goes around shaking his head and looking good. And here he is, Cavender and Tim Smith for Bruce and Robin McDonald. He's a good one. Hey. That right there would have been hard to beat. Oh, yeah. yeah it would have been. I don't believe that horse has ever, ever been beat. Ever. Yeah. He's won it every time he's ever shown. Good one. Real good. He's got three gates, too. Matter of fact, I think he may have a fourth, you know, like a running walk, then a running, running walk. walk. Yeah. <laughs> you, you got running and then you got running walk. Yeah. Uh, but he's good. Tim Tim gets it out. Oh, yeah, it? he does now. But now he, he is headed to Sugar Creek. We'll have to figure out what he's going to breed for. Yeah. But that's going to be this week's show. We got a Pewat coming up 27th and 28th. We got the Alabama Jubilee. And then we will be heading into November. Yes. The end of the year. So everybody get ready. Yep, you're right. right. Talk to everybody next week. Working out hard every day to be the best I can. I shift it to the right, shift it to the left Hunger down low and reach high to the sky I got my rhythm down pat, so they say I'm looking like a winner in every way So when I hear somebody say, what a horse I know they're talking about me, of course And I'm gonna be in that winner circle someday I'm a prime example of a Tennessee walker, a high-stepping, fast-walking Tennessee talker. I'm going to be in that winter circle someday. Ah, oh, please start talking.